Hi, my name is Rob Knight, and welcome to episode number three of Camera Basic Skills. Last week, I introduced you to exposure, and we talked about the ways to control exposure in your camera. Well, this week, I'm going to get a little more specific, and we're going to start looking at the three corners of the exposure triangle. Now, if you remember, the exposure triangle is the aperture, the shutter speed, and the ISO. So today, I'm going to start with ISO. If you ever shot film, you'll remember buying different speeds of film for different uses. You might use 100 speed film for shooting in bright daylight or 400 speed film for shooting indoors. Well, ISO in your digital camera is kind of the same thing. It effectively determines how sensitive your camera's sensor is to light. In practice, if you don't change any of the other two settings, in other words, if your aperture and shutter speed remain constant, a higher ISO will make your image brighter and a lower ISO will make your image darker. Let's look through the camera and see what that looks like in practice. Okay, I've got my shot framed up and you can see that my settings are ISO 500, a 30th of a second at F2. And you can see by looking at the camera's meter that this is the correct exposure. My meter is right in the middle and my exposure is 0, 0.0. So this means that this image is correctly exposed as far as the camera is concerned. So if I don't change any of the other two settings, if I leave the shutter speed and the aperture where they are, and I adjust only the ISO, I go one, two, three clicks higher on the ISO, you can see that now I have a plus one on the camera's meter and that my image is one stop overexposed. Now I explained the way stops work in my video last week and ISO works exactly the same way as the shutter speed and the aperture. Three clicks on the dial means one full stop or in this case, twice as much light. And if I go three clicks the other way, we go back to zero and then I continue three clicks, one, two, three, and now I'm one stop underexposed. So you can see that each click on the dial is one third of a stop. It sounds pretty simple, right? If you need your image brighter, you can raise the ISO and your image gets brighter. If you need the image darker, you lower the ISO and the image gets darker. But like the other two sides of the exposure triangle, it's really important to understand how the ISO settings affect your images. Sure, you can get a brighter image if you raise the ISO, but you'll also be introducing grain or digital noise into your image, and the dynamic range and color will be somewhat reduced from the lowest, or what we call the base ISO setting in your camera. I love a good analogy, and I've come up with an, an audio analogy that I think will help to explain how the ISO settings affect your pictures. Okay, so here's my audio analogy. An electric guitar takes the vibration of the strings and converts it into an electronic signal using the amplifier, which it then outputs through speakers or to a computer or however you're going to transmit that sound. So your digital camera takes in light, which is organically occurring, obviously, and it transmits it through the lens to the sensor. And the sensor's job is to convert that organic signal into ones and zeros that it can then put on a memory card and you can open up in your computer and you make a photograph. So just like raising the ISO in your camera, if you turn up the amplifier, if you increase the gain in the amplifier, you get distortion. The signal coming into the amp doesn't change, but that amplification creates distortion, right? Just like raising the ISO in your camera is going to create distortion in the form of digital noise. So let me show you the audio version of increasing the ISO and introducing noise. At a low volume and a low gain setting on the amplifier, the guitar sounds nice and crisp. It just sounds like the guitar, honestly, it sounds pretty much like it sounds if it's not plugged in at all. As we raise the gain setting, it gets a little more crunchy. It gets louder, but at the expense of that clarity. So now I've got the gain even higher, and you can hear that much more distortion. You can still hear what's going on. It still sounds like a guitar. Just like when you raise the ISO in the camera, you can still get a nice image, but you're gonna have to deal with that noise. Now I've got the gain turned all the way up. So think of this as raising the ISO as high as it can go. Think of this as ISO 6400 or ISO 12000. Now, now it sounds like a rock guitar, right? Now you have that distortion because you're taking the same signal and boosting it to the point that you increase the distortion. So that's the same thing with your ISO. You can go as high as you want with the ISO. You just need to understand that you're not gonna get quite the crisp image quality that you might get at lower ISO settings, but that's okay. People crank up the gain on these amps all the time in order to get a particular sound. 
So it's not that you avoid overdriving that sensor, it's that you know what happens if you decide to do that. I hope that makes it easier for at least a couple of you to understand what's happening when you increase the ISO setting in your camera. You're not actually increasing the exposure. You're not actually bringing more light into the camera. You're simply boosting the signal off of the sensor. Then the trade-off for boosting that signal and making your image brighter is that you might introduce a little noise into your image. And technically, the dynamic range and the color is reduced in quality from what you can get at your base ISO setting in your camera. I don't really get too hung up on that in the real world because honestly, in real life, you're gonna be hard pressed to tell the difference. And especially as a beginning photographer, I definitely don't recommend getting hung up on all these things about uh, best possible image quality and you, you should always shoot at this ISO and you should never do this. Just understand what that ISO setting does, right? Understand that you're going to be able to get a brighter image and that it's gonna be a little noisier. And then down the road, you can start to experiment with your own camera and your own taste and see where your own personal threshold is with your camera. I shoot my cameras at ISO 3200 all day long, ISO 6400 in a pinch. Um, if I'm shooting wildlife in broad daylight, I'm gonna shoot at about ISO 800 because I wanna get the fastest shutter speed I can possibly get. So for me to have a little bit of grain in the image is absolutely worth it to be able to freeze the action and get the shots that I'm trying to get. Like my buddy Rick Salmon says, if people notice the noise in your image, it's probably not a very interesting picture. I think the content of your picture is a lot more important than things like maximum dynamic range at low ISO settings. So again, understand what these settings do to your pictures and take that information to make the pictures that you want to make. Thank you so much for watching and I hope that I've helped at least a couple of you understand uh, this one point of the exposure triangle and what the ISO setting is doing to your pictures and how you can use it to get the exposure that you're looking for. Next week, we're going to tackle another corner of the exposure triangle and we'll keep on going through photography basic skills. If you have any questions or comments, please put them in the comments below. And I would love it if you subscribe to the channel. I've got a lot more photography tutorials planned and uh, I hope you'll stay tuned. I'll see you next time. Thanks.